Hey, what's up, guys? Kane here with XBLA Fans, and I'm going to be giving you a quick taste of Moonlighter. Uh, from 11-Bit Studios, this game is out on Xbox One now for $19.99. I've been having a ton of fun with it. Uh, it's definitely a really unique premise, and it combines a lot of cool different things here. So we're going to take a look at this. So this has a lot of different elements. Uh, you're Will, and you're running the Moonlighter shop, but you also moonlight as an adventurer. Uh, basically... You're your own archaeologist searching for, you know, treasures to sell in your store. And as you're doing this, you're able to eventually, you know, sell them, get more money, help revitalize the town, help put in new shops, help build your store up, add more stuff to your store, and just do some really neat things there. Um, you're going to explore dungeons, you're going to fight uh, different enemies, each with unique patterns. There's a couple different weapon styles you can use. So there should be something for just about everyone. I very much like the pokey stick. I'm trying to become a master of the pokey arts with the uh, spear here. Uh, I don't know. I just really, really like long range. And uh, it just kind of works for me. Um, the game has some cool mechanics. The ability to roll will let you, you know, even kind of jump gaps a little bit. You can dodge uh, bullets and other attacks. You can roll past enemies. It basically gives you a little bit of invulnerability. Uh, throughout the, the areas, these are all procedurally generated. They're different each time you go in there. Um, that right there was a healing pool, which is really convenient. Each level uh, within the dungeon seems to have one. There are three floors and then a boss. As you progress through each floor, uh, the higher floors do have better, quote-unquote, more rare loot type stuff. Um, and that stuff is normally pretty useful for crafting. Uh, one cool thing about this game is almost Monster Hunter-esque. Uh, as you kill stuff, you get various different drops from them. Each of the different areas has kind of, you know, different enemies and they drop different things. And that's going to allow you to upgrade your weapon using those parts to kind of give you different things. So you can get some different elemental bonuses on your uh, weapons as well as some... Uh, just more powerful, more attack. Uh, you start the game with no armor, no extra health. You know, you're using a basic sword and shield. Uh, as you play, you can kind of figure out what you want to use and you can kind of change things up. Uh, honestly, one thing that's really cool is like even this level right here, I had never seen that treasure chest uh, enemy. That was completely new to me. That was something that I played this game for about three hours last night. Uh, this is my first run this morning, and honestly, that was something I was not expecting. It was just completely different. Uh, most of the enemies have a pretty clear, you know, attack pattern. You can kind of figure out what you need to do to kill them. Uh, there's a good bit of variety, and that's something that's super cool. Um, right now, my weapon is actually pretty strong for this area, which is why you're noticing I'm able to kill them pretty quick. Uh, it's always painful to watch loot kind of fall into that abyss. Uh, the game does a lot of cool things with inventory management, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Uh, but you're really going to try to collect these valuable resources, you know. They're going to allow you to both, you know, make armor and weapons, uh, enchant armor and weapons, as well as just sell stuff to the people within the town to get more money, to, you know, kind of level up your store and do some more cool things. You're going to be do doing a lot of cool stuff, and that's pretty great. You're going to be able to do... Just a lot of unique, interesting things in this game. Uh, we'll touch on shopkeeping later during that um, kind of thing. But, I mean, like, as it is now, like, I'm still pretty early in the game. I'm not really seeing any of the crazy stuff on the shopkeeping, but it does kind of expand a little bit more as you get there. Um, the, the dungeons have been a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, you can take fall damage if you're an idiot like me and you kind of roll into a pot or a rock or whatever. That you can't break my biggest complaint i've had with the game is actually kind of this isn't the best example but this is an example is sometimes you get one of these kind of annoying enemies in a weird spot where they're kind of a pain in the butt to kill uh this one's not that bad but there are some like the guy you can only hit in the back and when he's on like a two by two square it's really hard to get behind him um those can be a little bit of a pain every once in a while but there's nothing too too bad Sometimes you'll find dead adventurers, and they'll have, like, literal gear you can just pick up, which is kind of nice. 
Um, the healing fountains do have kind of a, a limit. Um, I don't know the exact amount. My guess is it's probably 100. And that's about all you can get out of it. It'll stop glowing, and that's kind of how you know to stop trying to heal off it. And here's kind of what I was just talking about with uh, the inventory stuff. We'll get into that a little bit later. But there's some cool things on, like, how you have to place certain items. And also, you know, if you were to die, what items do you get to keep? And the game kind of makes it fairly clear on how all of that works. And that's pretty cool. Because if you were to die, you lose everything in your pack, but you keep everything on your person. Which is kind of cool. It allows you to kind of have a little bit of a risk reward kind of thing where you gotta kind of got to worry about stuff uh for whatever reason i actually do have some health potions i didn't actually craft these ahead of time i just kind of happened to have them which is just really nice uh that lets you you know kind of go a little bit further if you screw up and you know you're below the health that you want to be at any point you can leave the dungeon you know you can escape with what goodies you have and you can go sell them in your store or, you know, go back and, like, enchant or, you know, craft or whatever you need to. Uh, here's a good example of kind of that, like, 2x2 two two square guy. You gotta hit him in the back, and when he rarely will give you his back, and you can't really roll behind him very cleanly, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, thankfully, this one you don't, like, need to kill to progress past this area. But I've had times where it's been a little bit of a pain. That's my biggest complaint in the entire game. Other than that, I really don't have any. So that just tells you how, what I think of the game so far. I think it's fantastic. I definitely think it's worth checking out. If you like kind of dungeon crawlers, if you liked games like Stardew Valley a little bit, but kind of wish there was a little bit more, you know, action going on, this is probably going to be up your alley. Um, it's, it's pretty neat because you get to go around, you get to explore... There's people in the town to interact with a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't say it's as deep on that end as Stardew felt. Uh, but obviously, there's some cool stuff where you can just kind of go explore and, you know, look for different items. Eventually, as you continue to upgrade your shop, you're able to do a lot more with it. And you're able to, you know, go look for specific things and kind of, you know, find specific orders for your people. And there's a lot of cool things you can do here. And I've really been enjoying it. I like the enemy variety. There's a lot of just unique things happening in this game. And they've done a really good job. The dodge roll is incredibly well done. It gives you a lot of ability to just kind of, you know, travel through the levels. And also kind of avoid projectiles when you need to. Uh, some of the enemies don't even do damage like that little slimy dude. He just kind of tries to hold you in place and like let you get hit by someone else. One thing that's kind of cool is even with these, uh, you know, fists of doom there, they can actually fall into the abyss themselves. So if they're not paying attention, they can kind of just crash. Uh, once you get to the rare loot, this is where you start to see the various modifiers on the loot. And this requires you to put it in specific spots in your pouch where you have to basically look for where you can put it. Like sometimes it will say it has to be on the right or the left of the bag. Other times it'll say it has to be on the bottom. Sometimes it will say it'll delete an item to, you know, a various direction. Others will get destroyed if you get hit a couple times. At any point, you can sell it into your magic mirror. But that magic mirror is not going to sell it for nearly what it's worth. So that's kind of something you can do if you just have a bunch of crap that you don't know what to do with. And you're not going to be able to fit in your bag. Because right now, your bag is pretty limited. Um... Oftentimes, I find myself getting full by the time we've gotten to this point in the level, and I kind of have to do a lot of inventory management, which can be a little tedious at times, but they've done a good job with most of it. Uh, I think the biggest thing is I've not figured out how to mass sell to my uh, my mirror. So, you know, when there's a bunch of stuff that I can't, uh, you know, kind of carry, I just want to mass sell it, and it's been kind of hard to figure out how to do that without just kind of tediously, you know, bringing it over. It, like, honestly, it'd be nice if there's a little bit of a way to have it just kind of auto-optimize. Because, I mean, it's not really that hard of a puzzle at times. Uh, it's more of one of those things where you just kind of got to stay involved and actually pay attention to it. And some people, that may bother them. For me, it didn't really bother me too much, but I'm just kind of letting you guys 
get a good look at this just so you can kind of understand what exactly is here. So there's a lot of things going on with just the different inventory. Some of these are going to be things that I need, uh, you know, to level up my armor, to level up my sword and my spear and various other weapons. Uh, other things are things that I know sell for a lot. Um, I can kind of do whatever I want and that's kind of cool. Uh, obviously I use that mirror a lot when I just know I can't carry something because I'd rather get something for it than nothing. I mean, that's just my thought process. So it's kind of nice being able to just dump it in there. Um, but I've really been enjoying this game. It's really, really cool. Each of these worlds is unique and you're going to start to see different enemies and, uh, different, you know, kind of areas to explore. I believe the next one is a forest based area because one thing that's kind of cool is periodically as you're playing through this area you'll enter like a sub portal and that portal will take you to what feels like the next world for you know just like a room or two and it's kind of cool just having to you know fight new enemies and get new loot and sometimes you can even get the loot that you might need to you know build the weapon for the next area or you know at least some of the parts and that's kind of neat to see stuff like that. Uh, at any point, if I wanted to heal, I have those health potions and they're up there on my right trigger. And that allows me to just kind of go back health some, and that's pretty great. It's just really, really convenient how everything in this game is kind of well designed. Um, we should be hitting up with a boss pretty shortly. Uh, my goal is later today, I'm probably going to play this and try to take him out. I don't think it's going to be too tough. At any point, if I wanted to... I actually could, uh, you know, put a portal down and that'll allow me to come straight back to this uh, dungeon without having to restart at a new dungeon. Uh, it costs about 3,000 gold, which is a good bit. Um, that roll is super clutch because, like, as you saw there, I can go over up to two empty spaces and that can be really nice when you need to get up behind people or something. Uh, this weapon I have, I really, really do like. Uh, there's a heavy attack on it as well which kind of allows you to charge through. Um, I was trying out these little brawler glove things real quick because I just picked them up on this run. I'd never used them before. I don't think they're exactly my favorite. Now, one thing to remember when you are doing this inventory management is that the stuff on your person is what you keep if you die. The stuff on your uh, bag is what you would lose if you were to die. And you got to be a little careful about that. One nice thing is if you do discover you're probably going to have a hard time clearing a room, you can just bail at any given time, use your amulet, and it will allow you to just leave. And that's super clutch because uh, you can kind of just make sure that you get those materials you needed. Maybe you only needed like 5,000 gold to be able to upgrade something, and that's all you really wanted to do anyway. So you can kind of just bail. You don't have to go all the way to the boss. You know, you can always check out a little bit early. Uh, I really like the fact that if I come in here on the boss and I realize, okay, I screwed up, I didn't dodge correctly, uh, I can just kind of get out of here. So, I feel like my pokey stick may not be optimal for him, uh, but the boss has some cool patterns, and I feel like they're not going to be too hard to figure out. You just kind of got to roll and dodge a lot of uh, things, but they're pretty well telegraphed. Um, the big issue is more me just kind of failing than the game having any issues there. And that's super cool to see. It's always nice to play a game and you can realize really quickly, uh, how things are working. And that's super clutch. Uh, I think it's a really well designed game. Uh, this is really just half of the game right here. I haven't even gotten to the, the shop elements and all the other stuff. And I'm looking forward to talking about that in a couple seconds, but... Like I said, if you realize you're in trouble, or you use your pendant, you just get out of there, and you can kind of bail. It'll keep track of how many chests you opened, how many enemies you killed, and it's pretty cool. Alright guys, so that is literally only half of the game. We're going to touch on the next half now. So now that we've explored the dungeons, it's time to play Shopkeeper. And at the end of the day, you know, you could argue this is what the game's about. Your goal is to, you know get enough money to kind of revitalize your town to you know pay for your shop make things work um, as you can see there's various things that I could get from this guy um, I've already upgraded my armor a little bit you'll see when it's nighttime that my character is wearing the armor and that's a kind of cool difference between just shopkeeper well 
Shopkeeper Will just kind of walks around like a normal person. He looks completely normal. And this just kind of shows you a good bit of the variety as well as the different trees. It'll tell you, you know, like how much damage something does, whether it has any other benefits. And that's super cool. So you can upgrade your town. There's three different people available near the start of the game. Uh, there's two more, obviously, that will be available later in the game. I've not gotten those unlocked yet. I'm still very early in this game. I have not played that much. Um, I've been really enjoying what I have been playing. I'm looking forward to having shop level 2 unlocked and getting some other various things in here. So you can get different things that will allow you to, you know, rest up so you have extra health when you go adventuring. You can have a bigger chest so you can store more. You know, you can uh, have a better register which causes better tips. Eventually you're able to get, you know, things where you can set items on sale and you can do some other cool things. Um, you'll be able to recruit assistants and do some other things. So it's not like you're going to have to always micromanage everything super hard. But for people who do like to kind of focus on that stuff, it is pretty deep actually. And there's a lot of things you can do here. So right now I'm just trying to store some things to make sure I don't accidentally sell stuff I actually do want to keep. And this is just convenient because this allows you to keep, uh, you know, stuff in a room basically for a later date. And that's going to allow me to be like, okay, these are things I know I need to craft or these are things that I just don't want to sell right now for whatever reason. You know, maybe I can sell them later. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of money in this chest. Let's just put it that way. So if by some fluke I ever just decided, okay, I need to make some money quick, uh, I could definitely sell most of that and get it back pretty quickly. So that's pretty convenient. Uh, you can move everything over pretty quickly, you know, you can do it one by one or you can do a full item, you know, set of up to 10. Uh, you can price them out, you know, in like, so it prices them out by the unit, which allows you to just kind of, you know, put them in there pretty easily. Uh, one cool thing is like, as people pick stuff up, you get to kind of see their, you know, thoughts on the item. So like when they have that gold eyes, that means they thought they got a really good deal. And, you know, like other times they'll have a big frowny face. Other times they'll just have a nice smile. And sometimes they'll have, you know, kind of like a almost anime style, like, uh, you know, like just sucks. You know, that's when they're not going to buy it. So, you know, like your goal is to get it where they have a smiley face. The cool thing about this is it actually tracks basically what price it was when someone reacted a certain way. And also lets you know the popularity of items, whether it's high, whether it's low. And that helps you decide whether or not you need to move the prices up or down. Uh, so you can get as involved with this as you want. Like it very much has a little bit of a supply and demand thing going on, which is kind of cool. So if you like to micromanage prices and, you know, just kind of play games with stuff like that, you can. And that's pretty neat. I know the uh, the economics major in me kind of enjoyed this. I thought it was pretty clever and I thought it was pretty neat. Um, when someone buys something that I think was overpriced, it does, I believe, move the, uh, you know, uh, what is it, the popularity of that item down a little bit. They kind of get a little depressed they had to buy it. So that's what keeps you from, you know, just price gouging the crap out of everyone. Uh, your goal is to kind of get them to where they're at that point where they're happy but they don't think that they made like tons and tons of money, you know, on you. Cause like when they did that, you just leave money on the table that you could have got more. Uh, the first time you sell something, you kind of got to guess, which maybe you want to sell it by one at that point. You can move something as one, or you can go back up to it and you just move them both. Um, it's kind of convenient and it allows you to do a lot of different things there. Uh, once you're done with selling your items, you can just close down your store and you can go back to, you know, moonlighting as an adventurer. Uh, later on in the game, you'll have people who try to steal things from you and do some other different things. And that's pretty neat. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of how this game progresses. Our goal at the end of the day is to open the fifth gate. So there's four gates that are currently known to the people of this town. So we're in Renoka, and it's a, you know, just... Uh, a town that just kind of spawned because of archaeological... Ah excavation man i cannot speak today so you know you got a town that's full of brave people you know merchants and adventurers and stuff and we also have you know the shops that we've opened up you can talk to the various people just walking around 
So like I can talk to this woman, I can get potions from her, and that's pretty great. So if I keep those jellies on me, I can get the potions for cheaper. And if I don't have those jellies, she's gonna charge me more. That's something that's kind of cool in my opinion, because it kind of encourages you to get the ingredients you need. But at the same time, if you don't have them, she'll still sell to you so you don't have to, you know, like stress it too hard. You're still able to get what you need. And that's pretty cool. And I mean, I've been really enjoying this game so far. Uh, she does some cool things with uh, enchantments. At the moment, I obviously don't have enough gold to buy the really cool one that I'd want to buy for my weapon. Uh, you know, that would give me even more damage. That would be awesome, but we can check out something else and maybe get it for a piece of armor or something. And I think that's pretty cool, just the way that this game has just kind of added a lot to it. You know, there's just a very deep game here. Uh, it looks a little simplistic at first, but it really, really is incredibly complex. I think this game is really, really good. I hope you guys give it a chance. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. If anything you're seeing here looks like it would appeal to you, I have a feeling it is something that you would really enjoy. Uh, and then, you know, at nighttime, once you're done selling all your stuff, once you're done, you know, looting, uh, you know, getting, you know, all that kind of supplies you need for looting, uh, you can go back and you can go back into the caves, go back into the gates, uh, and just start anew. So this is Moonlighter. Again, this is the first gate. There's actually going to be five. So this is only the first area. You've got, you know, all of these that I'll eventually unlock. And that's going to be pretty cool. I, and then our goal is obviously to get this giant fifth gate. Uh, this is what all the adventurers have been chasing and no one's been able to unlock yet. Uh, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really do appreciate it. Uh, please do like and subscribe as well as share this. You have no idea how much that helps us. Uh, thank you guys so much and later.